All right, after another unintentionally long absence, I am back once again, this time with NASCAR Dirt to Daytona on the Nintendo GameCube. Now, this is one of the NASCAR games I actually grew up with, uh, because, you know, the Nintendo GameCube only got three NASCAR games, but fortunately, none of them were bad. I mean, we got Dirt to Daytona, NASCAR Thunder 2003, and also Chase for the Cup. No bad choices out of those three. Today, I'm gonna take a look back at NASCAR Dirt Today Tona. With no real goal in mind, I'm just gonna sit down, have some fun with this game, and basically see what happens. I mean, who doesn't want to go wheel to wheel with Ted Finger? Kenyon was always my favorite track to go to, and I'll show you exactly why. At this track, you can actually flip outside the speedway. Have a look. Into the parked cars! Look at that! While I've glitched my way inside this truck, I may have completely screwed the physics of this. Alright, now that we've seen that, I do not remember at all what it takes to drive these dirt cars, because I remember it takes a certain type of finesse that I know for a fact I've forgot. A little wide on exit. Alright. Dead last, here we go. Forgot how to shift. Actually change camera angles instead. You see, you don't want to get too low on the racetrack because then you are a victim of NASCAR heat physics. Where you touch the apron and the car spins around. This, uh... That fellow was really trying to get to my inside for a lot of laps. There we go. Nice job. Nice job! Yep, this has gone about as terribly as I expected. This guy again! Last lap. Seventh in Heat 2, and I can tell you that I forgot everything that I ever knew about how to drive these street stocks. I am in the B main. I feel like I'm underwater, that's disturbing. There's no way this goes well. Oh ho! Yep, just wreck everybody! That works! That was not even intentional. Much like the problems with the modern NASCAR Heat games, the AIs can wrap the bottom with no concern for centripetal force. Oh, he wrecked it! Oh my god. Got him. Alright, that should be enough cars wrecked to be able to close out the B main. That was not dirt racing, that was absolutely dirty racing, but it worked out. I actually set the fastest lap, even though I felt like I was basically the slowest. I in no way have the pace to be competitive in this race, going off of how my heat race went, and also how qualifying went, but if I wreck everyone again, then in theory, I may find success. Time to just jam it up into turn one. And of course that caused a wreck. Oh, I wasn't expecting a checkup. That's because the first wreck I caused, I, I I guess I guess I already destroyed half the field. Okay, just everybody stop in the middle of the racetrack. Yeah, they are just wrecking. There's death everywhere. I wasn't informed that this was actually demolition derby racing. I thought I was just getting into this for the street stocks, but now, now I'm the leader. You really can just wreck everyone. I like how there's just literally a, like car chicanes being made out of the burning, destroyed race cars that we've already wrecked. Wow, this stopped car really has just melted the AI's brains. Look at the gap that I have above, like, everyone, because they have to keep checking up for that car that stalled on the bottom. I love happenstance. Ten laps to go. I think he flopped. That was an overreaction. There we go, just lap the field. Alright, with the least powerful car and the worst driver, we have won by more than a lap! That... 
was by definition stupid. When was this? When- when did this happen, replay? Now the replay is broke. Did I seriously... break the game so bad with how much I wrecked everyone that now the replays don't even function correctly? How is this possible? Let's see if things get a little cleaner with the modifieds. I'ma go to Welch Valley, the fictional road course. Oh, this is a horrible line to take coming to the green. Kept my foot in it. All right, this is where we play. I was off the pace by three seconds. So this looks like another race where I'm basically going to have to wreck the entire field to win. Big check up in turn one. Oh, that was super awkward and terrible. All right, after lap one, I'm in seventh. Oh, two piece. I'm not running laps anywhere near what the AIs were able to put down in qualifying, but I'm telling you, I'm reeling them in. There we go. Second place up the outside. I don't think this is a good idea. Oh, not even contact. Keeping it clean. And there we go. Got a little greedy on exit. Wow. Wow, I'm screwing up that corner. And I just destroyed the front end of Anderson there. Yeah, the car is absolutely, like, destructively tight now. Because of how much I've been nailing the walls. Yeah, unfortunately, because of my own stupidity, I am almost certainly gonna have to wreck most of the field to win this race now. Either that or back them down hilariously slowly. Because, uh, the damage I got, yeah, I'm not gonna be fast with it. For example, that. You can clearly see the problem with that left front wheel right there. Oh my... Jesus. Fortunately, Jerry Nadu's lightning challenge taught me how to defend like nothing else. Because when you're out of gas, you've really got to figure out how to make your car wide. Alright, that one was equally stupid to the win that I got in the street stocks. Well, right, let's check out the trucks next. Now, this is a mix of real and fictional drivers, with the likes of Dick Blaha, which I am definitely gonna drive as him. We've already experienced a dirt short track, a road course in the modified, so let's do an intermediate in the trucks. Let's go to Darlington. I just realized this is gonna be the first race where I actually have to make a pit stop. That'll be interesting. Is it just me or does Darlington seem really wide in this game? Alright, let's see where we play. Dead last. I'm amazing at qualifying. Welcome to NASCAR's oldest super speedway, Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. I'm Alan Bestwick, the lady in black, the granddaddy of them all, call it what you will, but Darlington is always one thing, a challenge. This unique mile and a third egg-shaped oval has well earned the nickname, the track too tough to tame. Not sure if the outside line's a smart idea, but I'm gonna try it. I certainly feel like I'm in danger. That's because I am. Okay. Yeah, I am. I am not very fast at all. There we go. Need a caution. That's not going to be a caution, is it? I'm also quite surprised by how badly I am sucking 
I guess some would say that I peaked in the Modified series. I want to try something, because th this isn't going to make for good entertainment. I'm setting it to Legend difficulty instead of 105, and I'm going to see if I'm a little bit more up to speed with this setting. Alright, let's see where we play. So the difference between 105 and Legend is the difference between being like a second off a lap and being seventh fastest. Good research there. Alright, call that first attempt a mulligan. This is the real attempt. Are we doing this? We're doing this. Clear high. To the lead on the apron. This place does not drive anything like Darlington. Corners are too, like, smooth and sweeping for it to feel like Darlington. I don't know, there's none of the difficulty. So after 12 laps, I already have a three second advantage, so maybe I have made it a little too easy. I gotta come to pit road fairly soon here, and I'm starting to carve through lap traffic. Oh god, some of these slow trucks are just... They're, they're too slow. Jesus. Get out of the way. Either wreck or don't. There you go. I am gonna pit. Let's see how slow of a stop I have, because I have damage. Yeah, just, just let everybody go. Let everyone pass. There, let him too. Down in 26th? Yeah, this is gonna be... This is gonna be a restart of the ages. The race is going green. Alright, apron time. All clear. It always delivers. Car high. Clear high. Screw it. Clear high. The racetrack does not exist. I am running this place like they did back in like 1950 when it first opened. Run all the way down towards the inside wall. What? What is this? Check it out. It's my. It's my new Darlington line. There we go. That really ranks up there as one of the dumbest restarts of my life. That's about as close as you can get to the wall in this game without hitting it. I just basically cruised this thing around for the last few laps, but that's another stupid win. Let's try out some cup racing. I'm going with Robbie Gordon. So, Bristol Motor Speedway, back in this era, advertised that their banking was 36 degrees in the corners. That was in no way correct. That's what you call marketer's math. It was actually 26 degrees in the corners, but they added the bottom 10 degrees of banking that was on the apron to the actual degrees of banking that was the racetrack to get 36 so that they could print that number on posters and things and advertise the racetrack better that way. But the developers of this game took the statistic of 36 degrees of banking, literally. Have a look at the track. It's like you're turning into a wall. For perspective, Look at the front-end camera angle. That is what actually 36 degrees of banking would have looked like at Bristol. I mean, as if Bristol wasn't banked enough, this is outright intimidating. Alright, so I've got a terrible idea. I'm gonna start dead last, and I'm gonna do a 125 lap race at Bristol. Oh my god. We just about stopped. Alright, so how am I gonna do this without wrecking massively? I'm gonna use this camera angle so I have a good reference of where my front end is. Still there. Give me a little bit of room. Just a little bit. Hey look, there's John Wood. In the 121. Screw it, I'm jumping to the top. I know that's not how Bristol worked in this era, but... I gotta go where they're not. Bottom of three, nope, nope. I screwed up too bad on exit. Top of three... is also a terrible idea. That's about as light as you can touch the wall in this game. I gotta get to the bottom some point soon, there we go. It's just... The AIs defend down to the bottom on the straightaway, so how am I supposed to get down there? Keep it together! Okay, Mike! Thank you, everyone. That'll be it for today. Attempt number two. Immediately throw the thing into the wall. Stay high. Still there. Yeah, I just put myself in a bad place. Still there. And I put John in an even worse place.
Oh my god, we just- we just stopped. Standing start at Bristol, okay. Stay high, still there. Car low. Just sent a message, that's all. I mean, look at that. There, there was just a massive gaggle of traffic that I'm probably gonna wreck once I get up into, but either way, it's- it's gonna help me out in the short run. Oh my god, the smoke screens that are coming out of this are... are freaking me out. Bobby, put it in there! There you go! Gonna look to the bottom. But yeah, there's like no room for anything. Four wide? Four wide. Just happened. Oh, Ken lost it! Uh oh, your power steering just bit the dust. Oh my god, power steering failure. Well, the car now steers like a bus. Tony? How is this no caution? I just, I, I can't feel the car. Bottom of three with no power steering is a terrible idea. Sure. Sure, Roush, guys. Man, still no caution. All clear. Oh, no, there goes Newman, too. I saw an opportunity. A little bit of room, please. Just a little bit. Okay. Nice job, you're real professional. Finally, a caution. There's green flag. I still don't have power steering. Still there. All clear. Oh, yes, apron logic. <laughs> Get set. The race is going green. There's green flag. Oh, I love this. They're not leaving me with a lot of options as to where to go. Barely fit into that gap. Still there. Oh, ho, ho. just about wrecked it. That was your best lap ever. Starting to get into some serious oh, lap traffic here. Okay, that was that was nice and smart right there. Maybe I should make this even smarter and go bottom of four. Still there. Clear high. Oh, Apron. Clear. There we go. I'm into seventh. Oh, we got a spinner. Almost. Is that Sterling? That was Sterling Marlin. Bobby, you gotta got leave some room open. I mean, come on. Car low. Clear low. Rusty tried to go bottom of four, and I was not letting that happen. Okay, Rusty. All right. All right. I probably should be running the bottom. It's just I run the second to third lane so much, I don't really feel comfortable on the bottom, to be honest. And I can trap Carlo. people like Mark Martin right there behind lap traffic. Well, he was trying to root me up... up the track a little bit there. Still there. Carlo. Oh my god, Rusty. Just keep it together. Tony Stewart is the leader, and he's getting caught up in a lot of lap traffic right now. Oh, there. Mark, you left open the bottom. Gotta Stay take high. that spot away down to one, slide up. Oh man, a little bit of contact. Lap traffic will be a factor in whoever wins this race, and in particular it will be a factor in however many laps I'm able to complete without wrecking. Thank you, Mark Martin, for putting the bumper to me. I probably deserve that, to be honest. Mark! Please! Up the middle. Oh, Tony Stewart! Did you see that up there? Man nearly knocked the fence down. Alright, Tony, here we go. About to have a battle on our hands. Oh, he's gonna try to use the lap traffic on me. I don't care, I'm taking top of three as much as I can. It's still a safer position than if I were to take the bottom. Alright, me and Tony are about to put on a show. Rattle this cage a little bit. Still there. 
<laughs> Middle of three. I like it. Still there. If I can get to his inside, I might have a real good shot at him, but I'm not sure if he's going to open up. That line without contact. Still there. There we go. You're all clear. Had to jump to the bottom to make the move work. Oh, I don't have a lot of good options right here. Jeff Burton, stay out of this. Tony Stewart versus Robbie Gordon. A story as old as the hills. You're all clear. Oh, and they are about to wreck. Jeez. No caution, huh? The officials are really on it tonight. Now, just so I have this straight, I do pit on the front stretch, right? I don't have a back stretch pit, even though I started last. Here goes nothing. It's already going terrible. Slow down. Okay. I'm going to get a nice and slow pit stop because I've beat this car half to death. I'm one lap down, so if a caution does come out, I'm semi-screwed. <laughs> They're trying to make a caution, that's for sure. There we go. I, I just cycled back to the lead. Now, as long as I'm not an idiot and I don't wreck... I should be fine. Okay. I do not like what they're doing around me. Look at how big my advantage is. Why do I have an 11 second lead? Did everyone wreck? Wow. All clear. Man, Tony is really making me earn this. I'm just trying to put him a lap down. He left open the door for the crossover right there. That was that was his mistake. So I have zero idea how I managed to profit this much from the pit cycle. But I just put the entire field one lap down. I was not running that fast. Oh, a caution. Man, if only this game had a replay feature. Oh, yeah. Lead him down nice and slow. I like having clear track. I haven't had this luxury very often. Oh, are they wrecking? They are wrecking. Dave Blaney. Casey Atwood, I think. No caution. Are they wrecking again? Because Dave Blaney's merging back on the racetrack, still without a caution. Might as well end this race going top of three. And there we go. Survive the madness. So now, let's head to Daytona. Welcome to the Sunshine State and the birthplace of NASCAR, Daytona Beach, Florida. Since 1959, a driver's career can be made or broken at Daytona International Speedway. The two-and-a-half-mile tri-oval has served as a proving ground for some of the greatest names in racing. 31 degrees of banking in the turns and incredible speeds on the straightaways have led to the inclusion of restrictor plates here. Aerodynamic drafting has become a must-have skill in order to stay with the pack and master Daytona. Starting from dead last. All right, now I think the trick here is going to be to stay on the bottom. If, if I'm allowed there, geez. Oh, that was slick. This feels like a stupid idea. It worked out. Flamin' Joe's hot sauce. Is that a competitor to Big Daddy's barbecue sauce? We well, got a bit of an opportunity here to go up. Outside, inside, there we go. Quick maneuvers. Give me some room, Ricky. Just enough for a car. Oh, there we go. That's slicing and dicing right there. Okay. That was your best lap ever. All right, now up to second. Now the question is, do I want to lead the race or do I want to just ride behind Elliot? Because I, I like the riding option. Stay low. 
And here we come. Don't know what the speed limit is. Guess I made it. All that front end damage, that was just got from bump drafting Elliot Sadler. Oh! Car high. For real? You're gonna give me control of the car in a position where I can easily wreck it. Thank you, game. Stay high. Still there. Thanks. May or may not have needed a caution. It's not like I'm gonna get it anyways, am I? Yeah, that's cool. Officiation really knows what it's doing again. Wow, they're suddenly difficult to wreck. It's phenomenal. There we go, that worked out a little better. Finally got that caution. Turns out you cannot win this race with a four-tire pit stop and repairing the damage that you get from bump drafting. I will come to pit road, fix this thing up again, try to drive through the field. Alright, gonna be an interesting restart here. Stay low. Still there. Car high. Dangerous merge. Car high. Okay. Big run, I'm taking it. Still there. there Still we there. go. What are you doing? Car outside. Still there. Still Making the charge low. now. 205. Down to turn one. I like it. Oh, keep it together. He didn't keep it together. Carlo. There's a spin in turn four. Nobody Get kept it out. together. I do like how that guy spent like, what was it, at least 10 seconds trying to determine whether or not he was going to wreck. Still ran out of talent in the end, going way up on the air pressures, taping this thing almost shut, and we just got to go full send. That's the only option. Starting 38th, so I really don't have a chance, but I can try to do something. All right, we got five laps. There's the green flag. Clear high. Going where they're not. All clear. Five laps to go. Still there. All clear. Well, that worked out pretty nice. Hold your line. Okay, we survived that. Clear low. The six car is headed into the oh, we got idiots pitting! Alright, here we go. This is my only chance to get up into the lead draft. Still there. Two to go. Oh, we got a slow car. Still there. Slow car is going to be in the way. Wow, that was stupid. Last lap. Clear low. Stay low. Still there. All clear. Clear high. Wow, how did Elliot hang on? Checkered flag! Robbie Gordon wins the Daytona 500! There is death going on everywhere. Oh my god, that was a drive to the finish. I led one lap. We have Pro Trainer, which is basically the NASCAR heat equivalent of those Thunder license challenges that are in the EA Sports games. Welcome to the Pro Trainer section of NASCAR Heat 2. Here you'll have a chance to go one-on-one -on -one against your favorite drivers at some of their favorite tracks. So whether you're trying to pick up a few tips to see how the pros drive, or if you want to see how long you can hang with the big boys on the track, the NASCAR Heat 2 Pro Trainer Mode is the perfect place to start. Start off with Rusty at Bristol. The best lap around Bristol, Tennessee is definitely on the bottom of the racetrack. You need to stay right on the bottom of the track, make that late cut right to the very bottom of the track, come off a of turn four in the bottom, and if you can do that, you'll win Bristol. Okay. Completely missed the corner. Why am I faster than him? Okay. Okay. 
why is the pro lap in the 16 second bracket? I want to hear someone explain how to drive Daytona in any way that isn't just hold the throttle to the floor and turn left. When you come to take a white flag, uh, you just try to make the track as small as you can. Run right on the bottom and just try to make you drive the start finish line as straight as you can. There's not much more you could say about it, is there? Whoa. Uh, something, something wrong with Sterling's car. Look how slow he is. 1.8 seconds faster. All right, Dave Blaney, tell me about Charlotte. Well, you got kind of a kink in the front straightaway coming to the green. He's across the start finish line. Um, got a little bit of a kink in the dog leg on the little kink to the left. Um, up uh, right, well, you got a little room between you and the wall when, once you get off too if you're going good. Um, and, um, um, and then uh, uh, same thing, a little kink to the left before you get to the start finish line. and. Uh, and you're back. Ooh, up in the dirt. Darlington in this game has too much banking, and Charlotte looks a little too shallow. Watch the corner exit right here, where the banking just falls right away really fast. Looks more like Kentucky than it does Charlotte. Anyway, beat Dave by about half a second. You get the gist with these challenges, just just beat a semi-decent lap. But here's one of my favorite parts of this game. Welcome to another exciting season of NASCAR Heat from Infograms. This year we've got a whole new crop of exciting racing scenarios for you to master. Think you have the horsepower to master them all? The only way to find out for sure is to strap yourself in and try to beat the heat. Today we're just going to be doing the basics. Dundas Dirt. In this first challenge, you're coming into the final turns at Dundas County Fairgrounds and need to reach the finish line in less than 13.5 seconds for a bronze, 12.75 for a silver, a time of 12.4 seconds will earn you the gold. I got silver. Maybe I could get gold. I'm, f I'm feeling it. That was the gold, all right. In this scenario, you need to take a smooth, fast line around turns three and four at the New Hampshire International Speedway. If you can achieve a blazing 16.3 seconds, you'll take home the gold. There it was. I think what I love the most about this game is the fact that the development ladder makes absolutely no sense. Why would you go from dirt street stocks to pavement modifieds, then jump your way into a truck, totally skip the Bush series, and head right to Cup? It's an interesting approach at a Cup career. Hello race fans, I'm Ken Schrader. See how well you can handle turns 3 and 4 at Martinsville. If you're a real ace, turn in a time of 12.3 for the gold. That was gold. Good enough. For your fourth challenge, we're going to put you behind the wheel with one lap to go and three cars ahead of you at Mankato Raceway. And if you can overtake all three, you win the gold. I see that's going to be a real challenge trying to win this. Genuine question, is it actually possible to win this? I'm doing some mental calculus here and it just it don't look right. Maybe. Maybe that's the strategy. I know what I'm doing. It worked. Got the gold. Think you can do as well in a NASCAR Craftsman truck? Well, let's try an almost identical scenario, this time at Dover International Speedway. Can you outsmart the other drivers and find a way to get to Victory Circle? You need to beat them all to take the gold. Barely. Barely got it. For this challenge, we're going to put you on the track for a little practice session at Talladega. You need to stay in the draft of Ryan Newman and to prove that you're the master of the plate tracks, follow Ryan to the flag in under 49.2 seconds. Okay. I got the gold. 
we're gonna enter in what is basically the Konami code for race fans. Z, R, Z, left, right, Z, down, down. Now I go to unlockables, everything's there. Today I'm only gonna focus on two. Horn Mortar, and my other favorite is Super Draft. Amplify your drafting experience. Okay. Oh, yeah. Flip that pace car. Straight up. Watch this. We are unstoppable. Oh, 240! Oh, who's this? Mark Martin! The question is, can I get him out of this situation? Oh! I got Jeff Burton into it! Rocket Man. It's officially time to attempt a race with these settings. Oh my god. Going too fast. Over Robbie Gordon. I'm gonna require a super draft miracle. I'm gonna have to like hook up with Dale Jr. and go like 500 miles an hour. Didn't work. Really didn't work. Two sixty flying over people. Carlo. When you can't go around, you just go through. Remember that. All right, so I got a new strategy. I'm gonna hang out in the back for the first three laps, and then I'm gonna go for it on the final lap and see if I can survive and actually win from last with all these unlockables turned on. Still there. Wow, them slingshots are just, they are the real deal. Whoa! Not even intentional. I'm outside of the track. I'm hard on the brakes, and yet still, that did not slow down the super suck. Oh my god. Oh, Robbie Gordon screwed it. Whoa! Do a barrel roll! Wow. I was almost in contention doing that. I had no control over that. There we go, back into the lead draft. All right, here we go again. Last lap. Car low. Clear low. All clear. Car low. Oh my god. Did it! Great job. Everyone got destroyed. But that's a 1-2 finish for Penske.
All right, so I'd say that does it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Got to, you know, revisit NASCAR Dirt to Daytona, quite a few of its features. Now, granted, what makes this game most memorable is its career mode, which I didn't touch on that today, just in case I want to, you know, do a series of that, just like what I'm doing with the NASCAR Thunder 2004 career mode. I also want to take just a moment and thank all of my channel supporters from both Patreon and YouTube. Your support is incredibly appreciated. The next video, as you know, will be Season 2 of the NASCAR Thunder 2004 Career Mode with Flip Witham. And in Season 2, I'm chasing after a top 10 points finish, so a little bit of pressure coming into that year. Once again, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, I'll see you next time.